This is, uh, I think, there we go now, live on the YouTube. Uh, I can see, well, I see that that's different than some of the other things that we've had. And I also got that. Um, right, the brand new Mike Langworthy Theater uh, at the Colorado But Conference. you didn't put my name on the okay. audio visual, okay. so I would have uh, not seen it. Right, we do have, uh, yeah, you, the guys on graphics uh, as you come down to the third, fl third floor. Yeah, I really got to get down there to the third mm -hmm. floor. At some point, <laughs> we're going to. Uh, either way, uh, I think we even have a curtain to open for you. And mm -hmm. then I feel bad because they bought me a cake last year for yeah. my birthday, and I didn't get down there to get a piece of it. And uh, it was so good, too. Uh, okay, buttercream yeah, frosting. We brag about how you spend a lot of time with the graphics people. Yeah, I buttercream frosting uh, on everything, and mm -hmm. I put the butt in buttercream is what they tell me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. hot well, I am going to choose that. to believe you're talking about hesitancy when you say uh -huh. that. Right. Yeah. Um, and they also point out, you know, you've got the thong and I've got the brains, so let's make let's lots, make of, lots money. of money. Right? Bang. Yeah. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, you know, welcome to Whose song is that? I've been hearing that on uh, on some kind of uh, advertisement on television. Yeah, it's on a it's on an ad. We both watch the and same you've channel. You've got the bra, and I've got the brain. Yeah. Let's make lots of money. It is runs it between Shop episodes it's, of Matlock and Murder She Wrote, so yeah, that's what I hear. Pet Shop Boys from the yeah. Pet Shop Boys. Oh, yep. yeah. oh. Well, now they call them the Brick and Mortar Boys, but it's the same band. Is it really? Yeah, huh. it's used to be virtual. Um, yeah. You know that they, they've, they've been around so long. They they now like East End girls. <laughs> wow! <laughs> well, actually, they now like girls. Is is the is the lead? Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> Let's not make fun of the indiscriminate, sexually indiscriminate. Um, oh, okay. Far be it from me. No. Yes. Yes, far be it for me. They live in England and you live in Ann Arbor. So it is for it obvious is, reason. It is far from you. Um, that's Ned Rice, uh, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are just tuning in. <laughs> Sorry. I, I speak theoretically, of course. And um, As if. And uh, Ann Arbor, boy, that's one of those towns. Mm -hmm. I have some very fond memories of my years in Ann Arbor because uh, Ned and I both graduated from the University of Michigan, so far apart in years. Mm. <laughs> um, when I was there, I went to see Loudon Wainwright, who was at the time kind of a hot, a hot folk mm -hmm. rocker, yeah, and whose son has become more famous than he is. But I went to see him at uh, the Ark which was a coffee house mm -hmm. um, near the campus. And we had to wait for like 45 minutes for him come to, to come down and do the show because it was the night of the US versus USSR uh, Olympic basketball game that was stolen by the USSR by, oh, getting, yes. the officials, by getting the officials to roll back the clock three times during the show until- I remember that. End, and then ending the game. Yeah. And so he comes down and he does his show and like every third song, he stops and say, I can't believe they fucking did that. <laughs> <laughs> middle of his show. He's like, dead skunk in the middle of the road. The Russians actually got <laughs> Dead skunk in the middle of the road. Uh, Here's a song sorry. written by my much more talented wife, Anna McGarrow. Please mm. welcome. All right. Anyway. So he he kind of did a uh, Lenny Bruce there. Yes, he did do mm -hmm. a of Lenny Bruce um, in that he actually shot up heroin while he was on stage. Um, what? It's just a, th it's a thing that they did. It was, it was the 60s. Uh, we talked about that last night. Was it on the show or after the show? Laura, you were there. That you shooting that? about Lenny Bruce? No, when I, no, not about Lenny Bruce, about how, the, how back when I was going to college, things were different than they are now. Yeah. How uh, oh. I both both things are true that I was uh, that I just barely dabbled in drugs compared to compared to what it was like at the time and yeah. I also went blind for for taking some drug that I didn't really uh, research properly when I was at a party and what also, we have electricity now 
<laughs> it's a new world, really. Uh, yeah, I don't know exactly what you were talking about there, but I'm sure it was hurtful. It's so just as well. It's just made, as well. You've made an old man unhappy. You should be proud, Ned. Um, <laughs> I do that every time I look in a mirror, Mike. And you know really? That. Yep. <laughs> Um, what, you, what you should be doing, what you should be doing, is saying "nice top" every time you go over to see your mom. Um, wow! <laughs> wow! Uh, I'm just saying, officer down. Uh, okay, hey, nice top wrong me. day for that joke, as the jury is out, literally on the uh, on Derek Chauvin. Oh, okay. Um, it's the only I sense. Really, I really should the only it. sense in which the jury is out on Derek Chauvin. <laughs> the jury. There's 12 people deciding whether or not the quirks yeah. of the law are going to let a killer off. Yeah, that is a tough one. That's yeah. Hey, I'm sorry. We we just weren't sure. You just weren't sure. Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. You know, let's not talk about that. Because <laughs> we're here for a happy occasion. Yes. Um, second day in a row that uh, Laura Hug is going to be performing on the show. Yay! My son is in town, and um, I got a chance to go out to dinner with him and my uh, daughter and my wife for my anniversary. We figured what the hell, we'll invite her along too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somebody's got to pay. <laughs> well, somebody did have to pay. It, was, it wasn't as long as it's not me. I don't give a shit who pays. <laughs> I really don't. Um, and so we went to this place called Shanahan's, which is they, these places used to be really popular. Like, like they're big, bloated uh, steakhouses full of big, bloated Americans who make <laughs> make too much money. They're actually not allowed to vote as Democrats. Uh, you get to the polls and say, "I would like, I'd like to vote for Biden." You say, "No, I'm sorry, you drove up in an Audi." So <laughs> get over here. We just the, checked your credit score. No, you want to get over here in the revanchist line. Let's bring back slavery. So that's just what I'm saying. <laughs> let's let's keep the show light then. Okay, that's no, cool. that's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying everybody has to feel that way. That's just how okay. I um uh everybody doesn't have in fact everybody shouldn't feel that way because i feel the fewer people believe the same as i do the more superior i feel and that that I oh think that's that's, that's, that's what way, it's about that's the way things should be mm -hmm. that's the way i feel about it anyway um and i like the fact that um james longshore's mother is sitting on one side of the screen you know in the uh vain hope that her husband will come and join her and that's good. <laughs> I Comedy's the... about hope, Mike. Pardon me? Comedy is about hope. No. No, it's not. Not since Bob <laughs> Hope died. She's left you a bar. It hasn't been about hope. Not anymore. Bob died. No. Oh, no, my it's goodness. About, it's about uh, gallows humor at this point. Mm. Um, okay, so uh, the show has started, Chuck, right? We're on, yes, we're on yeah. YouTube. Uh, we're on YouTube, that media concept that doesn't have a uh, in the title. Right. And um, <laughs> people will be tuning in and watching it now and, and then uh, watching the archive after it's all over. Um, my name is Mike Langworthy. I'm the host of the evening. And I was wondering today why I like doing this show so much. And I'm sure I feel great every week being better than all the other comics on the show. <laughs> but that's not the reason. The reason is that I get to sit here and I'm like a DJ. And I and that was my fond mm. sort of beginning memory of inching towards some kind of creativity with my life. When I was in college at the University of Michigan, I was a DJ at the radio station. And I got to free associate like this and pretend. In, the, in those days, I had to pretend because it was radio that nobody was listening. Now, thanks to modern media and video, I know nobody's listening. Um, <laughs> that's what makes it best. Yeah. That's yeah. what makes it best. And people say to me, Mike, God, you're funny, but why don't you bring somebody else up? Okay, fine. Um, I'm interested in that. 
Um, I, I, our first act was supposed to be Josh D. Donato, but apparently somebody's gotten a little big for his britches in the last couple of weeks. Uh-oh. Ever since he got put on uh, the Apocalypse, the, the flagship show. He's not like, well, you know, the open mics, that's not really for me anymore. Why don't you put me <laughs> He got everything he no, it's wanted. It's not that I wouldn't do it, Mike. It's not that I wouldn't do it. It's just that, well, I shouldn't do it. My manager said it would be better. Uh, uh, right. Look, now, I'll, I'm going to welcome in. back somebody tonight. Our first performer is going to be somebody who hasn't been here for quite a while. And perhaps as part of his um, set, will be informing us. Uh, why that is, and just I know that's just an imp- that's just a quick teaser for you. Now I'm going to tell you the the rules. Five minute sets. I have this thing that I go like this, and that's at four minutes. You have a minute to wrap up when you see that. Well, you have a minute to wrap up when I do that. You may or may not see it. Um, and uh, I will put the next two acts into the public portion of the chat. And I'm looking forward to a fun show. Everybody who's on, well, all but one of the people on the list are people I'm really looking forward to seeing. <laughs> <laughs> and, didn't uh, say who, though. <laughs> that's right, Bruce. I didn't say who. That's kind of the point of the bit. You find uh, out at the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> see, if you see, if you see, I like, if you say right out, I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody perform except Ned. Then it just becomes. <laughs> just becomes the the suspense is gone. Right? <laughs> yes, the suspense is gone. The sort of maybe he means the other. Plain, kid, hey, Mike might be a dick. Maybe he doesn't really realize what he's saying. That element of it just goes right out the window, and um, <laughs> despite the fact that everybody always knew what I was saying, now I've actually said it. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to love seeing all but one of the people who's on the show tonight. Guess who it is? Likewise. And, um, <laughs> our first performer um, used to do the show pretty frequently. And then all of a sudden he was, I think, I think he left the state. And um, uh, apparently they've had a change of administration in the county that he lives in. And the prosecutor is no longer there. So he's back. Yay. <laughs> um, I think you guys are going to really enjoy him. Uh, I know I do every time I see him. Please welcome Norman Royal. Yay. I'm sorry, uh, Royal Norman. I apologize, Royal Norman. <laughs> That's um, all good. Yeah, Royal Norman or Norman. Incredibly cryptic performing name. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Norman Royal or Royal Norman. Either way you say it, really, I still sound like the only black guy that survives a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no hurt there. Yeah, it sucked kind of growing up with this name. With It held such high expectations. You know, people would come and often stop and say, oh, your name's Royal? Oh, you should be a movie star or an actor. Yeah, yeah, here I am, collecting unemployment. Woo, go America. <laughs> <laughs> See, it, it, they used to have this plumbing company, too, back in the day called Royal Plumbing. You know, the old slogan, you, you dump it, we pump it. What a great slogan was also a great way to remind someone of how shitty their life is. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so uh, I'm the middle child of two, which means I wasn't planned. Also means, hey, still dad. (laughs) Uh, A lot of people actually thought I was going to cross lines growing up. Actually, if you just look at my teeth, I'm only breaching the gap. (laughs) <laughs> it actually sucks because ever since i cut my hair i look like marshall mather's slim and shady messed up cousin <laughs> <laughs> so let me go ahead here and dig into some more here so <clears throat> how much time do i got left <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i was on a row until i dropped law uh, <laughs> Matt, I found out Matthew McConaughey's favorite restaurant is Chick-fil-A. Yeah, it turns out no matter how old he gets, them processed chicks still stay the same or stay the same age. Ah. <laughs> yeah, um, excellent. Speaking <laughs> of eggs, anyone ever take an egg and place it under a lamp and ask it a series of questions? 
I did. Turns out it cracks under pressure. The yolk's out. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, if you eat enough sausage, do you find the medicine link? <laughs> the Heritage Farms. I'm going to end out on my last one here. Recently, I've been thinking people need to stop having kids. They all grow up to think, no, I can be an entrepreneur, but realistically, they're only going into the weed industry. <laughs> coming up with creative ideas? I don't think so. They're only coming up with ideas that li literally, literally look like your mask, mask to still look like you're smoking meth. Huh. <laughs> See, for me, I'm better off going down the street, smashing a light bulb open. At least I get an idea. <laughs> my name's Norman Royal or Royal Norman. Again, I screwed up half my set too. You guys have a great night. <laughs> yeah, you may have screwed up half your set, but I only had two words to say. And I managed to that. That's all I'm saying. I can't believe the Russians got them to stop the. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work anymore. It's just too much time has passed. Um, okay, so that was nice. Thanks. Welcome back, man. I hope I see you frequently on the show. Yeah. I mean, not on the street. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass you, you got my on number, the right? On the street. Just respect that. Um, we have another person returning after a little while away, and I'm uh, going to bring her right up because I, I took extra time up, up front just being self-indulgent, and I can do that by myself. Um, so I'm going to bring our next performer up, um, who uh, is one of the inspiring women of the biz business community, in addition to being a funny comedian. I'm sorry, comedian. It's 2020. Mm -hmm. Let's try to be gender nonspecific. Thank you. Thank me. And anyway, her name is Donna Shannon. I know you're going to like her, so applaud a lot. Stop smir smirking at me. Hey, Donna. Hey. You. 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 Funny chick. I will accept funny chick. That's definitely. Yeah, right. thank you. Yeah. So anyways, this is something that a lot of people are shocked when they find out about me is I'm actually kind of older than I look. So if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm basically I'm too old to be a MILF. I'm too broke to be a cougar, and I'm too young for the granny porn set. <laughs> That's 51. That's what that means. But uh, lately, it's been horrifying because menopause is starting to kick in. And mm. specifically, mm. the hot flashes. Now, this is not what I pictured what it was going to be like at all. I thought it was just going to be, oh, I'm a little bit warm today, Karen. How about you? Oh, it's over. No. Oh my God. It's like being in a nuclear meltdown, full on Chernobyl. I'm like sitting there. And then the next thing I know, I feel this heat come in my chest and it raises up through my neck and it explodes through my face. And I swear to God, I have not ripped off my clothes so much or so fast since I've been in high school. Oh, <laughs> it's absolutely horrible. And then speaking of meltdown, I'm really, I think I'm getting a little bit emotionally unstable too. So it's kind of like I'm turning into the menopause dragon is what's really going on. But instead of breathing fire, I just get this burning in my chest and it's like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> anybody in my immediate vicinity it's like i feel really sorry for ryan my husband he's like gone from my knight in shining armor to like bilbo baggins trying to hide out with the one ring anytime i come into the room <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i'm like are you in here did you hear what i said and he like takes off the ring and he goes yes dear and he puts on the ring and he disappears and i can't find him again and it's like oh it's absolutely horrifying but um you know, what's also really disturbing is my dad now told me he's 80 years old and he's thinking about getting a divorce. And wow. I know, I know, but here's the horrifying reason why. It's because my stepmom, who's 72, is not putting out enough. 
Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. oh my God. Enough what? Enough. You know <laughs> what enough. Not enough. There's not enough jelly in her jam, Ned. Not enough oh. everything. And of course, he's telling me all this in detail. And I just really want to go up to him and I go, Dad, you've had 60 years worth of fucking. Okay, <laughs> put down the Viagra and pick up your antidepressants. All right, the rest of the world is going to be so much happier. But oh, it's like he even came up here to visit, and uh, he's like, "Well, now they're thinking about moving back up to Colorado. They're in New Orleans, and uh, she now wants to move up here because her kids, who are in older too, are telling her to just, you know, do what he says." You know, just go sit on his face because he enjoys oral sex. Oh I'm, like, oh. I'm like, he does her a literal quote. I'm like, okay, I wish I had a nuclear meltdown right now so I don't have to hear this shit anymore. <laughs> oh. But I did hit a good milestone. My oldest son finally moved out in January. Yeah. Yay. 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 Yeah, he's 33, so oh my God. that's, uh, you know, how that goes. Mm -hmm. But I finally figured out how to keep the kids or my dad from moving back in. You want to know the secret? Yes. You have to reaffirm your dominance of the house. So that means you have to go and fuck in every single <laughs> room of the house. <laughs> <laughs> and be sure to tell your kids all about it, right? It's like, oh, you want to stay in the spare bedroom for a few months? Uh, you know what? We're not taking down the sex swing this time, okay? Uh, we're, we're, we're kind of rotund people. It took a lot of engineering and we had to put an extra beam in there to hold it up. No, we're not taking it down this time. <laughs> oh, you want to stay in the toy room? We've changed that theme. So, you know, it's the different kind of toys, but they still have the name Buzz and Woody. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> you want to try the bedroom in the basement? You like the vanilla candles? I do too. They really set the mood. They're so nice. The wax on the nipples and vanilla helps with the smell from anal. Hello. And there you go. Oh. Oh. Uh, life tips for the millennium. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, it's a great idea until your dad moves back in. I know he might want to keep the sex swing. So yeah, uh, there's, no, there's no way he's getting rid of any of that furniture. Um, so, well, um, thanks, Donna. You've uh, you've certainly uh, set a bar for us for the rest of the um, she, did all your, she did all your sex swing material, huh? I think that was Donna's way of saying, "Hey, everybody." Don't feel self-conscious when you're on stage. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to bring on uh, someone that is one of our favorites here. Um, why do I keep doing it? I'm going straight into this. I should be being more self-indulgent, but um, we got a guy coming on in a couple of acts that'll take that, care of that for us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have somebody coming from... We, do, we have people that come from all over the world. We have someone that's here from Romania tonight. We have people coming from Colorado. We have people coming from other states, other parts of the country. And uh, now we have one coming from a different era. Uh, please welcome from the Pleistocene, Oog, son of Og. Ladies and gentlemen, Oog. Oog. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Gandadi, <laughs> 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 
Special. And that was uh, I love the new stuff. Reaching back from the uh, hard stuff. Well, uh, that was uh, ooh, son of Og, ladies and gentlemen. Um, who, yeah! Uh, Yay! He uh, really uh, he brought the kazoo. A lot of people uh, don't have He went kazoo. there. Pardon he brought me? it. He went there. Yeah. Oh yeah, he went there. <laughs> and as I said in the chat, that last song was by Granite Butterfly. Um, oh, um, I think it was Bronze Age. Yes. No, this was this is before the Bronze Age. These guys just they made a butterfly. They couldn't get it to fly, but they sure as hell beat the shit out of the tribe next door. That was um, some crazy shit. And then they did the song. So it was a wonderful thing what they did. 
And um, now, probably feeling young for one of the rare times that he's done one of these mics. Please welcome <laughs> Bruce Lipsky, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Bruce! Hey, thank you all. Oh, I appreciate yeah. that. Oh, yeah. This is the literal translation of what Ooh just went through before. <laughs> <laughs> I looked in the mirror the other day. I just turned 65. I looked Ooh, like that rusted yeah. old, that rusted old Buick that was in the Jan and Dean uh, album cover. <laughs> <laughs> tell you, nothing could be buffed out of this body. I'm telling you, my rear end is making funny sounds. My hoses are leaking, and my ball joints have bulged right up. Yeah. <laughs> I said, "Uh oh, I better get Mako." Mako says, "Only oh, no, you better get Medicare." <laughs> I said to my doctor the other day, I said, doctor, I'm really having a tough time getting out of bed. He said, what's the matter? I said, I don't know. But the only thing that starts up with me regularly in the morning is my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I said to him, I'm putting on a little bit of weight. I got this paunch over here. I said, what do you think it could be? He looked at me. And I said, I think you got the furniture disease. It looks like your chest is falling into your drawers. <laughs> <laughs> and it used to be in my house if I had a leak I'd call my plumber now I call my urologist and he's 50 bucks cheaper <laughs> I'd get out on the dance floor singing a little Dan and Dean action so I want to go out and bust a move I'm afraid to take my wife dancing now I might bust a hip <laughs> I forget things I swear my phone matches has a better memory than I do <laughs> I've gone from Vitalis to Cialis. <laughs> and it's gotten to the point where I change the batteries in my nose hair trimmer more often than I do my TV remote. <laughs> and during COVID, I watched a lot of TV. <laughs> now I got to get to exercise, you know, start to put that paunch on. But I only exercise between the hours of three and five in the morning. I'm running sprints from the bedroom to the bathroom. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> my wife calls it my fleet of pee. <laughs> Good news is I got my time down under six seconds. But I can only hold my pee for 4.2. <laughs> <laughs> That's unfortunate. 4.2. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel bad for me. You young kids in the audience over here, you're going to look in the mirror mm -hmm. 20 years from now, you're going to look like a rusted old Prius. <laughs> <laughs> but my wife is a fitness star. She takes goat yoga. But during this pandemic, it's kind of been difficult. The other day, the doorbell rang. And my wife was so excited. She said, come on downstairs, Bruce. Fred and Valerie are here. I ran downstairs. Valerie's her yoga instructor. Fred had a, a muscle shirt on. Turned out he was a goat. <laughs> Next thing I know, you're in the backyard, she's on the mat, and he's jumping on the back and licking her ears. I said, wait a second. How come when I tried that last week in the bedroom, you slapped me and threw me out of the room? <laughs> and now you're paying a goat to do it. Well, he said he's got fresher breath and better technique. <laughs> so I asked, can I rent can I rent Fred? Maybe you can take care of the crab dress, rats too. I'm telling you, I need this, I need this. Don't start with me. I'm telling you, we just celebrated our anniversary. 30 years of wedded bliss. Oh, no, no, wedded blisters. <laughs> <laughs> That's because she's been rubbing me the wrong way all these years. And I got the calluses to prove it. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Before I met my wife, I dated a lot of people. I even dated a very famous TV weather person. No, Ned, it wasn't Al Roca. <laughs> but the first time we got intimate it was like a bad winter forecast she was predicting 10 to 12 all she got was 2 to 4 <laughs> man hey was she disappointed now I know why they name hurricanes after women <laughs> we have a great relationship my wife and I we love doing things together Broadway shows nice dinners colonoscopies. <laughs> <laughs> we have perfect colons, and I have the photos to prove it. But every time I show them, I get the same response. What a couple of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> but my wife worked on Wall Street for 35 years. 
always in the business mode, but everything on an Excel spreadsheet. I wish you'd Excel spreading and putting out between the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> and one final thing, during this pandemic, I tested positive for the COVID disease. So sex was out of the question, but being the loving lady that she is, she took one of her um, Victoria's Secret black lace bras and made masks out of them. Thankfully, she's a double D, or else would have never fit over this Jewish nose. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My name is Bruce Lipsky. Thank you for listening. Bruce, Bruce Lipsky. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, it's probably a room in Donna's house for you, too. You <laughs> uh. <laughs> could be running a D&D. &D, I mean, D&D. &D. Oh uh, <laughs> what I meant to say was... Thank you. Great job. Love to have you. Uh, if you didn't see it in the chat, uh, Royal Norman had to take off early, but he'd left his Instagram handle and Twitter thing in the uh, chat for those of you who'd like to follow. This is a thing. It's a service that I do for the performers. Um, <laughs> because it's, I'm that way. You're about giving back. Right. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to keep things rolling with our next performer who was on the apocalypse last night and crushed it. That's all I can say. Very funny. Um, uh, it's nice that we get a, one, a clean performer who didn't do any drugs earlier in life. And is, <laughs> <laughs> just somebody who does that, you know, good old country Christian material that we all have come to know and love. Please welcome Laura Huck. <laughs> Thank you. Laura much uh speaking of um christian material i uh my friend kimmy we she was like during like a rough patch in her life was hanging out outside of the pacific garden mission here in chicago home of the unshackled shout out and uh, <laughs> she, met, she met a nice guy in line uh for food or something and so they decided to go back to his house and do it and uh, so uh, he took her to the refrigerator box that he lived in. And uh, uh, it's, a, you know, it was a homeless shelter. So it's not out of the question. You know, it wasn't a surprise. So they had sex. And then the next night she went back and he had a different girl in the fridge box. So I just love the, I love people that have game, I guess. Mm, yeah. I just really, I want to have that kind of um, uh, um, I was surprised, uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk about age, so I'm just going to keep going with that. But, you know, I was surprised. I haven't done a lot of dating apps. I was on OkCupid for a little while. And um, uh, actually, I found out that um, England, they have one that's like farmers only, but it's called Muddy Match, which to me just sounds like, you know, you're into <laughs> anal, but not douching. But um <laughs> I'm sure there's uh, scatological uh, lovers out there. Uh, the, um, the, I just found that out today. I just was like, that's so unfortunate, but I wouldn't, you know, I'd still go on it, but I, um, <laughs> I was surprised that there were people my age, like over 35, you know, on Tinder when it came out, because I thought it was pronounced tender. Um, I was like, oh, we're allowed on that. I'm, I was like, do you have a, a, a dating app called Tougher? I feel like I would do well on that, you know, or maybe, <laughs> maybe one called Varicose. That sounds like a, a dating <laughs> where I'd really do well. Um, you know, women in middle age often complain about not being seen, feeling invisible because society doesn't value them as sexual objects or romantic objects or whatever kind of objects people value. I don't know, but... Um, <laughs> I know for myself, I have that experience. I really miss walking down the street and having somebody yell out, hey, bitch, want to suck my dick? So you know, <laughs> now they just, hey, yell out and ask me for directions to Target. So um, <laughs> uh I, um, I actually, I don't feel not seen. There are still men that let me know they desire me. If I, you know, if I have to get approval from strangers, it's usually men who are drinking on the train. That's their, that's their night, you know, Saturday night entertainment men who yeah. masturbate on the train. Um, and 
sadly more recently it's been there's been an uptick since i've been wearing a mask and um, <laughs> <laughs> men who masturbate on the train only after being turned down by other men to engage in a fist fight so it's like i'm still sort of second choice on that one but uh <laughs> I, um, I did today, I was on the train platform and a young guy came up to me and he, um, he asked me, he told me I'm looking for a woman to marry. And I was like, are you asking me? And he's like, yes. <laughs> and I was like, are you trying to, I don't know why I didn't walk. I just, so I, I had to find out more about him. I'm like, I'm not getting a lot of offers, you know? So it's like, you never know. But I said, are you trying to stay in the country. Yeah, I was taking it really seriously. You know? And he said, yes, I am, but that's not why I'm asking you. So I felt flattered right away, you know, oh. and it's also clean. So that for me was also, uh, a, you know, was a step up. But um, <laughs> I, I told him that I didn't, I, I said, I'd like to get to know somebody a little bit more before I think about marrying them. But thank you. Also, I said, you shouldn't, have you ever tried dating apps? He goes, I don't really like those. And I, <laughs> I said, I don't think it's safe for you to ask people, you know, to get married on the train platform. And then I didn't even think about the fact that maybe it's not safe for me to turn down a proposal on the platform yeah i should have waited <laughs> i didn't you know that occurred to me later i'm glad it worked out the way that it did but uh i am uh you know i'm hopeful uh that i i mean i'm dating somebody maybe one day the person i'm dating and the marriage proposal will come out of the same mouth i don't know but <laughs> I, still have, I still have hope you know I, people ask me you know do you want to get married and i say yeah i'd get married if the right person came along and they're like what kind of wedding would you like and i'm like I'm sure whatever the home puts together will be fine. You know, just like <laughs> wheel us out in the day room, you know, hopefully we're in the same wing, at least they're on the same floor and, uh, you know, there with the droolers, <laughs> shakers and, uh, you know, and just get some of those leftover directions that they are uh, decorations. They keep in a box under the table there. It'll be fine. The cafeteria is lovely. So <laughs> that's all I have. Thanks very much. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Laura. Okay. Laura Hug. And you know, hey. it's it's so Ooh. great to learn there's still some romance in the world. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. You might have wanted to tell that guy that asked you to marry him. Maybe you'll have some more luck if you start wearing pants. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're not sending out you're not sending out a marriage vibe when you walk around naked on a train platform. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, sure. But that's true. Anyway, that's, I'm just thinking, you know, I, I'm all, the wheels are always turning, Laura. Why? Because I live for my performers. I want them, <laughs> I want them to succeed in every aspect of life. Um, of course, the jury is still out on a lot of them. And then there's some where the jury isn't out anymore. Um, from Bucharest, Romania, um, We've got James Longshore. He's going to come in here and uh, perform for us and his family. And um, he certainly has given them an opportunity to learn a little, little more about what comedians are thinking about sex in the post-pandemic era. Uh -oh. Now they get to watch their son. Oh. <laughs> so James, Longshore. James Longshore, ladies and gentlemen. Woohoo! All right. Uh, hi, I'm James Longshore, and I was really confused by what Mike just said. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm going to open with a joke. Yay. <laughs> All right. So two animals are playing cards in the jungle. First animal says, you lion. Second animal says, you cheetah. Hello. <laughs> now I'm going to double down. Then a third animal walks into the jungle and they both say, hi, Ina. Oh. <laughs> oh, what is the hyena's favorite holiday? Anybody, anybody? Yep. Well, Christmas, of course. Close, <laughs> no day. cigar for you, buddy. 420. Oh, because 420. he's hot. 
Uh, it's yeah. 420 somewhere and it's 420 here in Romania. I thought where better to celebrate than with Colorado, right? Of course, uh-huh. you guys are still back in the past. It's still 419 for you guys, the longest mm-hmm. day. Um, actually, it's not even 420 here. It's actually 24. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know what they say. You can take the guy out of 420, but you can't take the 420 out of the guy. Absolutely not. Got a couple of 420 themed jokes for you. Why did the stoner do really well in school? Why? High school. He was a high achiever. (laughs) (laughs) What animal smokes the most pot? I don't know. Really? You don't? I'm disappointed. Hyena. (laughs) <laughs> you just went over this. Well, you're you, lying. Are you you're paying lying. attention, people? I missed the callback. I missed the callback. Uh, All right. So I, I got one more. I don't want to ruin your 420 before it even starts. So just one more. Um, okay. So you know who used to smoke a lot of pot? Hyena. He still does. He used to smoke a lot of pot and he still does. Mitch Hyena Bird. Um, Okay. Oh. Love that guy. Love him. Love him. Um, All right. So, George Michael actually is the guy I was referring to. See, you you wouldn't guess that, would you? No, you wouldn't. wouldn't. No. Um, And he said that he doesn't anymore because he's dead. but he used to smoke 25 joints a day. So I think what he meant to sing was wake and bake before you go, go. But uh, <laughs> you got the lyrics wrong because he was smoking 25 oh. joints a day. You didn't know what that sure. So as you guys know, um, I am, as some of you know, I'm an actor out in Rollywood. That's Hollywood in Romania. Recently, <laughs> yes. Uh, recently reached the pinnacle of my career in a new Casey Affleck movie, The World to Come, playing rapey guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's got to be the part I was born to play because um, my co-star, Vanessa Kirby, is nominated for an Oscar for Best Actress, and this Sunday she might win. Yeah. And if she does, yes. If she does, it'll be because I was so convincing as rapey guy. <laughs> uh, actually, the it's in the family this year. Oscars uh, working with Oscar nominees. My wife uh, worked with uh, produced a film that the best sound editing nominee. I'm babbling. I'm bragging actually, and I could like um, you know Zoom brag and put some participation trophies straight from New Jersey behind me. <laughs> yeah. You know, this looks like an Oscar, right, Mike? Yeah, right? exactly like an Oscar. What do you know? You want a Golden Globe. So, you know? I don't, yeah, that's you're like, right. You're right. I wouldn't know what an Oscar looks like. That's for sure. That, <laughs> Golden Globe is foreign press, which means you're you're big in Romania. Yeah. Mike, didn't you win World's Best Dad once? Uh, they 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 took it back. They took it uh, back. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> uh, they took it back at my court date. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the focus is off of me now. So what, what are we even doing here? Uh, all right. Well, um, yeah. So now uh, I'll just tell you this one more thing about my latest audition. Okay. I knew it was a part for me when they said the character shows a toothless grin. And mm. I'm like, yes, finally, all those years as a meth head actor have paid off. Uh, uh. Uh. All right. I'm James Longshore, and that's the long and the short of it. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so why don't you why don't you just sit back and have a nice long giraffe of wine? Um, <laughs> oh. uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And lying down, can, and lying down afterwards. You, you really yeah, stuck really. your neck out with that joke, Mike. I certainly did. Uh, <laughs> one thing I'll never do is quit jackling around, y'all. I'll uh, never panda to an quit audience. Jackling around. Okay, that was vintage Mike Langworthy. 
I, I can't oh. bear the thought. <laughs> all right. So um, our next performer um, is someone who's, uh, who's like regularly been performing on here. And I look forward to introducing her tonight. I want everybody to clap a lot for Paula Maddox. Paula Maddox. Hello, Paula Maddox. hello. Paula Maddox and her lovely neighbors, internet. Please go ahead. Way to wreck my first 10 seconds, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to be my safe box where I don't get heckled. Like, come on, Mike. I can't heckle you, but it's impossible to heckle somebody before you introduce them. Just FYI. That's just. Well, I come on here. I come on uh, here for a reason because I enjoy how you fuck with me. What can I say, Mike? So I'm going to give you the clap you can tell your mama about. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yes, thank you very much. I've had to switch neighbors, though. If I can say, normally I think my internet sponsor, because um, usually it's my one neighbor, um, but he found out. So now I'm up to the next neighbor, you know, because <laughs> why not? Working better. Move it it is. It is. You know, a little fellatio never hurt anybody, you know? I mean, really. Wow. Yeah. I'm an I'm a old mother Hubbard who lives in a shoe with so many kids, she don't know what the fuck to do, man. So, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. I'm used to being fucked up and, and stealing from the white man is kind of in my DNA because um, I'm Native American. I know you guys can't tell that by looking at me. Um, so I'm an incognito Indian. Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So at my home club, Savage Henry's, there really is a savage on the roster. It's kind of cool, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, my mom's a Native one. She's not 100% Native, but she likes to act like she is. So that's been kind of scary. <laughs> Can I tell you? Uh, they don't make them like her anymore. Yeah, we're Hoopa from Northern California. And thank God we were in Northern California because by the time the soldiers got over here, the dumb fuckers had given themselves PTSD. So they started marrying us instead of killing us all the time. So, hey, <laughs> worked out good, good to you know. know. It's how I got my white daddy. So, hey, oh God. <laughs> yeah, a lot of um, fancy natives, they throw around that word, word transgenerational trauma. And, and there's really only two good benefits to that. One is assimilating, and the other is hiding in plain sight. <laughs> yeah. Handy. There's other cool things about being native, like we've got killer fucking jewelry. Like, it's on point, you know? <laughs> yeah. And our ceremonies, the one you can see, they're fucking lit. Literally, like there's fires in most of those. That's cool. Yeah. 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 We can almost always get the white folks with the fire. No offense, but, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah and we also got you know good medicine you know we got that sage and before it used to offend me when people would would take my culture and, and use it for their own good and then the pandemic happened and i'm like go outside with your dream catchers man light your fucking sage all hands on deck <laughs> God. scary you know because my dna starts to quiver when i see asian folks get thumped on you know oh jesus because because we the blacks and the natives we've been used to it for a while you know not used to it god whoever gets used to that like you have a fucking choice but anyways yeah so um i <laughs> i married myself a white man just like my mommy you know i believed in the patriarchy dumb bitch <laughs> but i lucked out i got a good husband um in my family we also get native names um when my mom was pregnant with us, she, my uncle would gave us our names. And, and my older sister's name is Daytime Moon, which means the sun, you know, and it, it, she was hot and scolded anybody around her. So that was weird how that was true. Like, wow, maybe they know things, you know. <laughs> and then my younger sister, um, her native name is Butterfly. Well, that's fucking pretty, you know. Fragile as a motherfucker. Can I tell you, like, <laughs> what are you going to do? It's nice to look at, you know. So, hey. Um, so me being the middle child, um, my engine name is Spiked Buck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the creator likes to fuck with me. I think he likes seeing me squirm, you know? Yeah, it's crazy because growing up, I thought, am I supposed to be transgendered? Because I was a hell of a tomboy, you know, but back in my day, that wasn't an option. So I just fucked myself up normally, you know, with the husband and the kids. And, you know, I never got to explore that, you know, because you're thinking, is this a sign from the creator? You know, my mom says, well, I just liked deer meat a lot, babe, when I was pregnant with you. You could <laughs> <laughs> you could tell me that first instead of, you know, 
it's a weird name. Like, what do you do with that? But a few years ago, I was driving through the mountains at three in the morning and, and it was in the autumn and, and I was worried, you know, I didn't want to hit a deer and I was coming around a turn and, and I saw a, a buck and I stopped, I broke, I didn't hit it, you know, but his brother was tailgating and I spiked that buck y'all. I burned my name. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking leveled up everybody leveled up. It's kind of cool. Can I tell you? Yeah. Because my cousin, two dogs, fucking, how's he going to do that? Like, there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all good times, all good things. So, yeah, you got to stay safe. I don't know how much time I got left. Um, So I'm just going to end it here. And thank you for the time, Mike. And I'll see you all next week. You're very good. welcome, Thanks. Paula. And you know what? You ended just about right on time. So you have an innate sense of time. Wait. <laughs> I'm after time. It's mm. <laughs> good. You did you got to be careful with those song titles. You're going to give Oog, Son of Og, ideas. Oh, shit, that's episode. right. Next, <laughs> next, <laughs> next and there's some bad blood there. A bunch of songs from Kinky Boots. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I don't even know who's next. I can't remember. Ned. Ned. Oh, oh shit. I know who's next. And I'm just saying that because everybody always <laughs> calls me old, and every once in a while I have to do something old. So More of your fuckery. Yeah. Um, so, Ned, um, I've already told everybody that Ned is uh, from Ann Arbor, Michigan, currently, and mm -hmm. somebody that went to the same college as me, wrote for a bunch of televisions. I didn't say that, but he has. Some of us graduated, some of us didn't. Move on. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. So, well, I graduated. I, oh, I I, now know. I get it. Now I, I understand. Know. Okay. Sorry, Ned. I didn't mean uh, to. Uh, uh, you, you, were a, uh, you were a drug major, right? Um, anyway. What? Drug, drug major. You were a drug major. I minored in drugs, Mike. Come oh. on. <laughs> he majored in alcohol. Uh, you have to come to rehearsal. It's very important. Mike. He majored in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He majored. He majored in keggers, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, okay. See, because it's it's it all comes full circle because it's a it's a really hip college reference. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, you're probably going to want to perform at some point. Am I right? Oh, I, I think I should wrap up now, Mike, honestly. How am I going <laughs> to That was quick. <laughs> you, should get into, uh, you should get into your material because the people are going to want to laugh. And the sooner you're done, the more we can move on. Um, when you say material, you mean... Comedy. Mat oh, oh, of course. The of course. jokes. Yeah. <laughs> jokes, sure Ned. The jokes. Boom. Ned Rice, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, let's uh, applaud for him. Thank, thank you, Mike. Oh, how, how deep a hole you've dug me. Listen, uh, <laughs> this COVID stuff is crazy. There's nothing on TV. So I've read every book in my house. And there's quite a few books in this house. And I just stumbled across this little gem today. I don't know if any of you have heard of it. Um, I, I don't remember buying it. It may have been a wedding present or something, but um, it's called Mein Kampf. It's the, uh, I guess, the memoir, autobiography of Adolf Hitler, um, if you haven't heard about it. And it's kind of like Stephen Hawkins' uh, Brief History of Time. A lot of people bought it, but not that many people read it, which is too bad. Um, it's like the Bible that way. Uh, it's, it's not like the Bible at all. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for jumping in because uh, uh, the silence was throwing me off. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to say this is kind of a warts and all look at the, uh, uh, the beliefs of, uh, of uh, Adolf Hitler. And I, you know, I hate to look at this through a 2021 lens. It was written in 1924. But I'm going to say parts of this book would be considered anti-Semitic today. Uh, portions of it. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's just say Adolf would have been canceled. And I think I think you all know what I mean by that. Uh, funny thing about the title, the original title of this book, and this is not a joke. He, Adolf Hitler wrote this book in prison. And he wanted to call it My Four and a Half Years of Struggle Against Lies, Stupidity, and Cowardice. That was actually the working title. And, you know, the publisher said, mm, it's a little wordy. You know, we don't see that on a bumper sticker. And somebody at the <laughs> publisher said, why don't you call it um, anti-Semitic genocide for dummies. 
And he's like, <laughs> 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 a little on. He says, who in the world would buy a book with the words for dummies in the title? That's never going to happen. <laughs> so, so they ended up just calling it My Struggle, Mein Kampf in German. Uh, you that on a hat. So, yeah, it, on, you know, it actually does fit on a hat, and I know that for a fact. Um, <laughs> a lot of people don't realize this. Uh, Rudolf Hess, who became the deputy Fuhrer, was in prison with Hitler, and he helped. He didn't actually, Hitler wrote the entire book, but Hess helped him edit it and type it. So he wanted some credit. Now, Rudolf Hess wanted to be called Mein Kampf by Adolf Hitler as told to Rudolf Hess. But Hitler said, no, we're not, we're not doing that. That's, that's too much. <laughs> but, um, but see, the problem was uh, Rudolf Hess was with CAA and Hitler was with William Morris. So I think you know who won that fight. Um, <laughs> anyway, sure. but Hitler did thank Hess in the acknowledgement. That's the part of the book where they say thank you to whoever helped, you know. And I thought this was sort of classic. Hitler said, I'd like to thank the Jewish people hey, I get it. You're Jews. I'm Hitler. Not a big fan. But let's be honest. Without you, I would just be the bad mustache painter guy. So thanks. Thanks for being there. Oh, and uh, Lakayam or whatever it is you people say. <laughs> um, here's the other thing. Now, this is kind of a long read. So I do recommend the book on tape uh, as opposed Whoa. to just the book. Now, Hitler, of course, being dead, couldn't read it himself. So they got Morgan Freeman. And yeah, <laughs> you know, well, he nailed it. So anyway, that's my review of this book. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. If you check it out, it also makes good firewood. You have a fireplace. Uh, back to the pandemic. Fine, fine. You win. Let's talk about that again. I, uh, I'm, I'm just about finished with this pandemic. I've gained so much weight now that I can now socially distance for myself. Um, that is a lot of banana bread. But um, good news, coming from New York banana City, bread. hookers in Times Square are now offering uh, hand sanitizer jobs, which I think is part of the, you know, that's part of the, 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 the solution. Also, if you want a half and half uh, with or without mask, it's the same price. So good for them. <laughs> good for you, hookers. I love you. Uh, I think that's important. The thing that's ruined by COVID-19 is takeout food from fine restaurants. I don't mean fast food. I mean like nice places, you know, that, that you do, didn't used to do takeout. Now they do because of the COVID, you know, I'll call up a nice restaurant and say, hey, can I have two orders of lasagna and two salads? Guys like your food will be in the Southeast corner of the parking lot at 545. Come alone, bring the money. And no cops. I see one cop and you get no lasagna. I'm like, okay, okay. Can, can, you, can you just put the lasagna up to the phone? No, no. See at 545. <laughs> so, so other than that, I'm, I'm, I think I'm enjoying the pandemic as much as, as anyone could expect to. Uh, well, would you look at the time? It's, it's time for me to, to wrap up. Thanks for listening, everybody. And enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah. 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 Ned Rice. Oh. Ned Rice. Woo. You know, you know, you know. Come on, no, come on. No sooner do you get with comfortable with him than he has to skedaddle. That's, uh, <laughs> no. it's, you know, I, I, you told me a like, lot. I'm so glad we had this time together just to have a laugh or sing a song. Um, <laughs> it seems like we just got started. And before you know it. It's the I time you have to say goodbye. Just... Okay, fine. Oh. Okay. You, you, no, it's I'm your just... throw. Go ahead. Um, no, I'm just wondering if that's if that's the time that it becomes just as we start getting comfortable. Um, How would I know? I didn't graduate. Um, I did not know. Okay, that you great way to end. You know. Very nice. Um, it's such an easy school. How could you not graduate? Oh, I'm I know. Sorry. I actually did, but it's, uh, it's funny. If I did. I, we're kidding. Both of us are kidding. We go back. Wait. Ned and I go back. We go back to when we liked yeah. each other. That's how long we've known each other. Oh, well, <laughs> it seems like a lifetime ago, Mike. You know, it does. It does seem like a lifetime ago. Mm -hmm. You know, we have some acknowledgments, acknowledgments to make before we move on. Can I just uh, let everybody know that th that what we're watching Please. is the open mic, and that's every Monday. It's at eight o'clock Mountain Time. Please tell your friends, especially friends who have ten bucks to buy a ticket. Mm. which should be all your friends um and um 
we support on this show, we support a group called Magic Moments Incorporated, which is the umbrella organization that produces musical shows and makes uh, special needs uh, inclusive um, musical productions every year. I help to write the shows and my daughter performs in them. They're very good. All of the songs are licensed to the production by either ASCAP or BMI, excuse me, BMI, two uh, big music uh, licensing organizations in the country. So if you come to the show, you know that the music at least will be uh, really well, uh, well written and recognized. And m many of the songs are hits. A lot of the songs are also in hit Broadway shows. So um, you'll, you'll love the music. We repurpose the lyrics and we tell a story every year. It's wonderful, you'll love it. And you can just go to magicmoments.org and donate money. And you can also go to elevatingconnections.org and donate to an organization that does um, events which reconnect people who have been separated by the uh, state via the um, organization that does you know, and the name just escaped me. The foster care. You foster, foster care system. Care. Jeez, it's, I'm so sorry. Right. No, that's I'm quite so, right. Thank you. So sir. very sorry. And um, uh, because it's a great or Ele Elevating Connections is a great organization, and the foster care people have actually saved a lot of lives themselves. So I feel bad that I forgot that for a second. I would say that it was a senior moment, but I've been having this problem since I was 20. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually diagnosed with epilepsy. But um, maybe you I were seen in was, college. When they told me that, I just thought the IRS was um, coming in for a seizure of my assets. And it turns out, uh, hello. Turns out it was all me. Uh, uh, and a virtual game show is that our next? Uh, that's our next episode. Our next apocalypse. Make sure virtual you virtual game show, and um, that will be coming up this Sunday at seven p.m. Right. And a fistful of apocalypse after that. Bronco Brad is headlining that episode. The which one? Game show or fistful? Uh fistful of apocalypse. Fistful of apocalypse. Ooh. Bronco Brad will be great with we'll here. He's a good friend of uh Oog, son of Og. Son of Og, right. Yeah. Um I think they're more than just friends. Yeah, Oog speaks very highly of him. <laughs> <laughs> well, he doesn't actually speak very highly. He, he grunts, grunts very, very highly. Highly of him. Highly of him. Um, and um, then we have Gigzilla, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll be doing. We always do every week. We do a round robin sort of contest for guys to write jokes on a topic, and the topic of Gigzilla will be that that gig was so bad, and then we get the chance to write our things. So I, anybody who's here on the show tonight, you can check in on Apocalypse just to join the round robin if you want. Every week you can do that, but on Gigzilla you'll have stuff. My big fat Apocalypse wedding. <laughs> um, the headliner on that show is Jessica Misra. Jessica, Jessica Misra, ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. who often comes here on a Monday, and um, she will not be here tonight because, as she said, and I think, and this is really cute because it just shows how much camaraderie we have. She will not be here tonight because I have a life, Mike. <laughs> 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 which I, um, it's always, I find that very quaint. Uh, but be that as it may, Seven Brides for Seven Apocalypse will be the week after that, mm -hmm. which is Stephen Young's show. Stephen uh -huh. Young is a really talented comedian who's frequently been on Apocalypse, but he'll be headlining this show. Got to come in for that one. And I believe we may be doing, uh, that'll be uh, the last show before our summer hiatus. Mm -hmm. And therefore we're saying thank you we We got uh, thank you to uh, gifts for our uh, customers and VIPs, the, the mm -hmm. Longshores and uh, yes. Donna as well. Uh, so mm -hmm. we got you these puppies. <laughs> yeah, and there's no truth to the rumor that they came from a kill shelter. Right. Um, Is that three dog night? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are so awesome. <laughs> These are uh, three dogs at uh, a uh, shelter singing The Boxer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, That's crazy uh, talk. We also uh -huh. got you these fancy beverages. Ooh, yeah. Ooh fancy. And when yeah. we were at the restaurant on Saturday night, my, uh, my son asked the waiter for some sage advice, and it turned out it was a drink. I didn't Hello. know that. Ah. <laughs> Ouch. It actually yeah. was a drink. 
And this is Jesus going out yeah. fishing. Yeah. <laughs> About 10 miles offshore is his picture. Um, yeah, he, he was so holy, boat. he couldn't even get the worm to sink. Mm. Ah. Hello. And that's holy, ladies and gentlemen. Damn. You will become fishers of men. Um, uh, I, I direct everybody to the uh, public chat to see why Oog has to leave early tonight. And um, it's very funny. And um, we're ready for our next performance. We're ready for our next performance. We still have a couple of acts to go, and I'm really looking forward to bringing them on. Uh, the next one is somebody who just recently started coming here, and um, I've always liked her. And not only that, she uh, is named after one of my favorite um, my favorite journeyman professions. Please welcome Vicky Pr Plummer. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, all right yeah i don't know how to fix toilets though i'm glad that's your favorite profession <laughs> all right um okay so you know i knew 2020 for me personally was gonna suck i didn't realize it was gonna suck for the whole world um <laughs> i knew for me it was gonna suck because i got tonsillitis twice in a row um i mean what am i six so <laughs> anyway, then I got broken up with um, by text. Oh, yeah, geez. I know. That's On funny. New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah, no. I know. Totally sucks. I could kind of see it coming, though, because I was 13 years older than him. Um, I don't consider myself a cougar, though, because I look 13 years younger than he does. Oh. So there's that. I know. Hello. But um, lesson learned, no more college freshmen. So there's mm. that. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, I thought I'd miss him more at night, though. No. Hello. Yeah, exactly. Um, it turns out I just needed a weighted blanket. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you guys tried those? They make them to feel like a nice warm hug. And they do. They co they cover you. They keep you nice and warm. They feel really good. Um, you just have to be really careful when you roll over because sometimes you can roll over and um, part of your body won't come with you. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can get injured. Um, I named my weighted blanket Lenny because um, he has a lot of brute strength that he doesn't know about. Hello. So. Oh, yes. Goodness. Yeah. Lenny's like, baby, where are you going? I want to keep cuddling. I'm like, Lenny, you got to let go. So I had to put him in the cupboard. He's folded up and every once in a while he'd be like, baby, come on. I want to cuddle. I'm like, shut up, Lenny. It's spring now. It's too hot for you. So you got to, you got to calm down. So it turned out that, um, it wasn't even a breakup. It was an autocorrect mistake with my phone. Yeah. <laughs> I hate autocorrect. It's always changing things. Like, I never mean the word birch. Yep. I also never mean the word duck. Mm hmm. Um, men, you may think you're sending a simple text message, but uh, women are going to overanalyze that thing more than the crime lab at Quantico for the FBI. So. <laughs> We're also going to screenshot it and send it to at least 20 friends and go, what does this mean? What does he mean he had a nice time? We're going to do that. So just be aware. <laughs> and then we're going to write back, I'm fine. And we're not. We're not fine. <laughs> so just be aware of that, too. So, Because fine never means fine. I just want you to be aware of that. Okay? Fine. So. Yeah. So um, we've been together for three years, um, uh, but we're not boyfriend and girlfriend. We don't like labels. Uh, we just have sex anyway. So um, we call each other poker buddies. Mm -hmm. So it works for oh. us. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Oh, I love this. I love this. Uh, it works for us. Like we don't call each other friends with benefits. Um, we don't call each other lovers. I mean, who says that except couples in the 1940s, you know? 
Um, so Poker Buddies works. We text each other things like, you want to play Texas Hold'em tonight? You know, it's <laughs> stupid, but it works for us. Um, but he had uh, COVID last year and he had it really bad. So he lost his sense of taste and smell. And uh, I do question, though, whether he ever had his sense of taste because um, he likes to wear backwards baseball caps all the time. Mm. So there's that sometimes he likes to whisper sweet nothings in my ear like he'll say things like um when you graduated high school i was five <laughs> so there's that but he's a mechanical engineer i'm a stand-up comedian so there's that but anyway i did just turn 51 this year so Donna, I feel you. I'm not going through what my mom calls the change, which makes me cringe every time. Um, and Tom is 38, which we look exactly the same age. Actually, I look, I look younger than him. So that's always fun. Anyway, I got to go. It's been fun. Have a good one. Hey, Vicky. Vicky Plummer. Vicky Plummer, ladies and gentlemen, and her cousin, Virginia Electrician. I don't know. I don't know. You just try it out. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay. Sue me. Um, at any rate, uh, we've had a lovely show so far this evening, and we're going to continue that loveliness with, um, now I feel a little awkward because I'm about to introduce a man and I just said loveliness and, um, <laughs> and I'm an you old can roll with it. and I'm an old person. So I easily embarrass myself and I just feel stupid, just stupid. But you'll love it, and uh, I know I'll love it as well. And uh, with a picture of the Golden Gate Bridge in the background, that's lovely. I have to admit that. <laughs> Jeffrey Burden the second, not the first. Hey. The thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah. No, actually, this this is a real view, Mike. I just right before the show, I took a dip in the bay. You know, yeah, did you? Get a little refresh. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just you know. I wanted, to, I wanted to cool off a little. Um, everybody, thank you very much, by the way. I, I, I tend to mix words around letters, sentences on writing while I talk. Like I literally wrote to, uh, as a bit, basic training intense was. Um, <laughs> so maybe dyslexia, maybe. I haven't been properly diagnosed, uh, but uh, I hope lose you. I don't. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have a uh, a five year old grandson. Love him to death. Crazy about him. We we do all kinds of stuff. You know, but sometimes I say to myself, "Is he really listening to me?" I ask myself that. Is he really? I think it's my ego, right? And then I'm sitting at the table with him and he says papa i said yeah buddy he's like you're a motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> and, and and when that happened i realized he's totally listening to me okay he absolutely <laughs> is listening to me okay that's a nice that's a nice uh, nice thing for my ego everybody it's a nice thing for my ego um, and, and my timing in conversations is a little, it can be a little fucked up too, right? Um, oh, by the way, uh, happy Halloween. What? Happy, I, I know, I, I know it, I know it was six months ago, but I don't think I told anybody happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're quite welcome. I told you I'm awful in, my timing's awful in conversations, Mike. Thank you for your pick. Sorry. I, I was I was Superman. I was Superman. Let me clarify. I didn't embody the character of Superman. Not really. <laughs> I, I I put on blue tights and a red cape last weekend. Aren't okay. superheroes great? 
Aren't they great? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry, uh, I, I've got two minutes, 50 seconds. Was that my one minute light, sir? That Good. was your one minute light. I guess that my clock is wrong. No worries. No worries. Just go, um, ahead. go ahead. If you go by your clock. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Um, I, uh, thank you so much. I, uh, everybody, I think that uh, my, my mother might have uh, dementia. She, she left me three voicemails in five minutes. And she called me Big Daddy. <laughs> wow. I was I, I was just hoping really that was a Golden Girls reference there. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. You know, thank you for being a friend, Mom. Um, <laughs> I no, I everybody, I I was in the uh, I was in the Air Force. I wanted to, I wanted to fly. I wanted to fly. And I did. I flew to San Antonio and took a bus to Blackland Air Force Base. It was amazing. Um, (laughs) Very, very, very good ride. But, you know, I, I knew I, I really didn't want to be a pilot. I mean, I get sick on the teacups at Walt Disney World. So (laughs) piloting was out completely. Um, and by God, I don't know what I'm going to do with that bit, but I've got something to work with. <laughs> My name's Burden Jeffrey the second, everybody. You've been lovely. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> yeah. oh, I like that. Uh, I, I like the whole concept of an air force guy who, uh, gets sick on the teacups. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can't. I can't do any of those rides anymore either. I was on a, I was on a tour in my first show business job, and I got put on a thing called the octopus, and I got stuck going around today, going back, going around and around in circles, and I've been uh, dizzy every time I get on a ride ever since. That's fascinating. Um, it's all going to be in my book. Stuff nobody gives a shit about. <laughs> By Mike Langworthy. Um, uh, that was the publisher's idea, by the way. <laughs> it, it wasn't so much his idea as his way of saying, I'm not going to publish your book. They just held up the manuscript between two fingers and said, this is shit nobody cares about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we've had a lovely show tonight. Um, uh, Ned Rice had to flee. Um, man, okay. They are really on top of it in the FBI these days. Uh, and, <laughs> um, I thought everybody was uh, wonderful. James Longshore apparently had to get the hell out of here. Um, but, uh, but his mom's still here, which is great. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, wait. Hey, wait a minute. We just had somebody walk into the room who I'd love to put on the show if you'd, she'd like yeah, to go to Jenny. Danny, Would you like to perform as long as you're here, Danny Rydell? Hey, <coughs> hey, hi everybody. Hey, Woo. let's let Danny Rydell do some stand-up, huh? What do you say, Danny, gang? Danny, you just yeah. made it. I'm, I'm, My I'm uncle has a it. barn. We could make yeah. our own costumes. Danny yeah. can tell jokes. We could have Bobby Rydell do singing. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly right. We could have Eve Arden doing uh, promos over the. Uh, PA system. Dan- Danny Rydell, ladies and gentlemen, please. Hey. Warm welcome. Hey. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Glad I could make it here tonight. I, uh, I, I've had a little bit of, of a rough day. I, uh, I, I was uh, trying to, trying to get, uh, get a bunch of work done today and, and book a trip because I'm finally, finally about to be vaccinated and, and it's about time because I'm ready just as an artist to enter my postmodernism phase. <laughs> but I, I, I did finally get a lot of things done today and I was able to book my, my vacation. I'm, I'm going to Charlotte, North Carolina next month. And I, I'm, I have an interesting fun fact about the Charlotte, North Carolina airport that I discovered while booking this trip. 
did you guys know the abbreviation for the Charlotte International Airport is CLIT? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I really hope the pilot's a woman. Because, <laughs> I mean, other, I like, if there's a male pilot and I have to keep telling him where to find it, it's, it's like, dude, like, little, just overhead compartment, just like, right there Come on. and I'll, I'll be flying there out of the philadelphia airport for which the abbreviation i noticed is phl so when you look at the plane ticket it just says p hole to clit <laughs> hop skip and a jump really do you even need to fly <laughs> it is kind of south southeast <laughs> I, I mean, you'd, you'd think you could, you'd think that would be a, you know, just rent a car, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> car, plane, who can tell the difference? Who can tell the difference between two things anymore? Like Marjorie Taylor Greene, for example, that time she was posing with her big AR. Um, I think she thought it was her Hitachi wand. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Which makes me think I should challenge Marjorie Taylor Greene to a duel. <laughs> Excuse we hawking dawn bitch <laughs> no one okay all right but uh no i i mean i don't know i i mean i i can uh i always know what tip my space laser is on i'm just saying so i think i might win <laughs> chance uh i was um interesting interesting thing happened today uh two interesting things happened today uh one is that Tesla stock dropped 25% and not Elon Musk flew a drone on Mars. <laughs> so can we just take a minute and just 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 go Elon Musk and go ha <laughs> ha. Cuz you know Elon Musk right now is is just somewhere like like mom NASA did a thing before me. <laughs> I, I swear that guy has got to just be like two really smart kids in a trench coat because there's no other possible explanation. Like, what was his childhood like? I mean, seriously, like sometimes I look at an adult and I just I just really want to know what their childhood was like. Like Donald Trump, the only conclusion I can come to is that's what ha would have happened if Jean Benet Ramsey had lived. <laughs> and then there's Jeff Bezos, who like that guy is just basically smaug, right? Like, who keeps 184 billion dollars? 184 billion dollars. Literally, no one needs a hundred and eighty four billion dollars one billion dollars is a thousand million dollars he has a hundred and eighty four of those you guys <laughs> <laughs> a year ago jeff bezos gave 100 million dollars to a food bank and and everyone thought that was great for a second until you know you talk to me because and i do math for fun <laughs> and <laughs> What you have to realize is $100 million in relation to Jeff Bezos' net worth, uh, when you compare that to the net worth of the mean American household, it's the equivalent of $48.50. Nice. Going to give you all a second to go throw up while you think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say something to Jeff Bezos real quick if he's watching Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos, sir, I challenge you to use your power and your money for good. Otherwise... You are a poser. You are not a real Star Trek fan. <laughs> I'm, Jeff Bezos. I'm hitting you where it hurts. How did you watch 176 episodes and not understand that Jean-Luc Picard was telling you that socialism is a good thing? <laughs> you, sir, are not living a life that is in line with the ideals of the United Federation of Planets, and I challenge you to put your wealth towards replicator technology so that we can feed our starving world and get out of this motherfucking funk we're in, and you have the power to change this, and unless you do, then I, I don't know. At this point, I just feel like I'm a Marxist on Ferenginar trying to talk to this <laughs> motherfucker. Like... <sighs> It's okay. That's been that kind of day. Anyway, my name is Danny Rydell. Thank you so much. 
Hey. Yeah. Hey, I was wondering when we were going to get our mer our first uh, alien Marxist reference. <laughs> <laughs> and now I know Ch Chuck. You know, I never get a chance when we do these shows to actually check in with you because you're so busy running the show so wonderfully, and I'm so busy fucking up all your work. Um, so, uh, anything occur to you that you might want to share with uh, Room? Yeah, I think Danny's right. Um, Musk smells. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, uh, what I did this weekend uh, is the this title week? of my report. It's just three paragraphs. I'll be done in a moment. Um, okay. I've been in search of... Uh, there's new establishments in my neighborhood, and mm -hmm. uh, I thought people opened new gay bars, so I wanted to go and support... Um, Turns out Orange Theory, Mike, not a gay bar. Um, <laughs> Rookie mistake. Yeah, no, they, uh, they, 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 they serve, they don't even serve Orange Julius and vodka. Um, also, Mike, uh, turns out Club Pilates, uh, not a gay bar for Spanish pilots. Uh. Um, <laughs> I'm working on that. Uh, yeah. tonight's a bit, I, I, I know we got to wrap up the show, Mike. Um, uh, yeah. I've been pretty excited. There's a big change in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, my Brita filter is so old, Mike. It is. How old would How it old be? Is it? <laughs> my Brita filter is so old, it's registered Republican. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Mike, are you, are you uh, me? my Brita filter is so old. How old is it? My Brita filter is so old, it has the wrong opinion on the Chauvin trial. Oh. <laughs> mm, yeah, it's chauvinistic. Oh. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> uh, I think the jury's still out on that one. Um, <laughs> my... My Brita filter is so old, Mike. Mm -hmm. It has a reverse mortgage. <laughs> it works by reverse osmosis, and it has a reverse mortgage. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Uh, I hear that it takes nine minutes and 32 seconds for it to filter your water. Well, it still does more work than a millennial. Um, <laughs> oh, in, in what way? In what sense? Uh, it I don't know, but I know. Right, Mike. How many uh, does it take to change a light bulb? Mike, That's it's racist. snowing outside. That's racist. Oh, I stepped on your joke. No, it's all right. It's fine. Right. It's <laughs> it's as if we didn't establish a lot of time for you today. Um, <laughs> like from eight o'clock up until now. Mm hmm. Um, it's snowing, Mike. Uh, yeah, it's snowing happened? harder than the go-go booth at Studio 54. Mm. <laughs> All right. Um, sometimes you got to tell the truth. Uh, and so uh, this Sunday, there was an incident that I just thought was inappropriate. Uh, I went for a walk in my neighborhood uh, um, up the street from me uh, for a good length, you know, a nice, healthy Sunday walk. Uh, yeah. There's a church, and it happens to be a gay church, you know, uh, or assume a gay friend. It's a church that has once held up a pride flag, which sure. um, apparently upset a particular group. Like on my Sunday walk, I suddenly heard protests, and I was like, I'm not sure what's going on with the protests. It's Sunday morning. Uh, and as I kept walking closer and closer, I realized somebody's protesting the church. And then um, as I got closer, it's uh, some anti-stuff, uh, you know, anti-abortion people. And mm -hmm. uh, they've got 10-foot uh, tall paintings and signage uh, and, and leading the whole uh, protest of, of people going to church. Uh, mm -hmm is one guy and he stood on top of his truck and uh, he yelled to the people as they're walking inside, uh, where are your Bibles? Uh, 
why don't you have your Bibles with you? He's, apparently, he's complaining that they're not godly enough. They don't carry their Bibles. And I'm a, I'm a Catholic. Uh, we, we don't carry our Bibles to church. There's one in the pew that nobody's ever read. <laughs> we wait for the wine, and then we're out. Um, <laughs> and we certainly don't tell people how to church. That's not what we do in my family. Uh, this guy kept yelling at the, and I was a little stunned. You know, a guy kept yelling like, where are your Bibles? And he's uh, uh, questioning who they are and how can they be gay and married and such. And finally, I just yelled, hey, God said quiet on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I thank you for the laugh. I got two laughs out of people in line for the church and I got the guy to shut up for one minute. Uh, oh. And that made me feel better. Uh, so true story over. Uh, thanks for the time on your show, which is really mine, Mike, but thank you. Um, <laughs> Much appreciated. Well, it is your show. I'm grateful that you let me talk on your show. Right. Apparently, too much. Came as news to me. You could have shown. She could have told me that six months ago. We could have saved a lot of time. Uh, but now I know that that you know maybe we should just change it back to open mic with a C, and um, I won't uh, belabor everybody with. I like Richie the C. Um, yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are still here, uh, we have completed our show for this evening. Um, Mrs. Longshore, you have been, if there were a Congressional Medal of Honor for audience members, you would get it because you stayed here, you listened to all of this, and um, clearly you've lived a very... Um, enlightened life because you were able to sit through some material tonight that my mother would not have ever sat through and not, <laughs> and not even not even i'm not even talking about it because she's dead she wouldn't have sat through it if she were alive so <laughs> she would have said oh whenever i said anything slightly risque she always said michael dean langworthy you're just terrible and uh, and whenever um I woke up in the morning, she would say, Michael D. Langworthy, you're just terrible. Oh. And, um, <laughs> and she was putting the bowl of porridge in front of me because that's what we ate uh, in the uh, cabin in the woods where I lived with three bears and my mom. Um, <laughs> she'd say, Michael D. Langworthy, you are fucking terrible. And I'm sorry, pardon my French. I said, mom, really, is that French? Because I don't think that's French at all. I think that's just you being really, really vulgar because you hate your son so much. <laughs> and she looked at me and she just stared and with the most love, the, the dripping with love. You ever seen a you ever seen a dog that's just, you know, so in love with its master that it just sits there and stares with that total loving thing? She would stare at me and grab my cheeks in her hands and say, Mike, I don't know who your father is. And that was a moment, you know, whenever that happened, I would just kind of get verklempt a little bit. And I would reach for my copy of Mein Kampf Fire, which was a German Boy Scout book. And we would just read together. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that I had kind of a, a storybook childhood. Um, <laughs> and for those of you who under, don't understand storybook childhoods, it was all about a storybook that um, like the Grimm fairy tales would be where the dancing shoes had to be cut off and the woman had no feet afterwards. It was those kind of fairy tale childhood. Um, and that's the kind that I had. Um, and we weren't Catholics because we believed in God. Um, ah! I was just trying to let, you know, anyway. So those of you who are the, the Grim Creeper, <laughs> that's right, that's what she was. Um, so, and by the way, the show's off. Nobody's obligated to be here at this point. <laughs> um, I actually about keep, it YouTube? I keep some clouds in my closet, just something to shout at when nobody's here. Mm -hmm. um, so 